Hello again, everybody. It's Harry Box, the technical trader at thetechtrader.com. It is Tuesday night, the 28th of February, last day. We're headed to March, the Ides of March tomorrow. Um, the market had a soft session, but a lot of stocks that we followed did well. I'm going to show you, however, both some longs and some shorts. We'll be checking in on the box of shorts list. But for today, uh, starting off with AQMS, which popped 4% today on 400,000. And the significance of that is after the explosive move it had, um, <clears throat> On the contract announcement about two weeks ago, it then ran up, got up to 18, I think it was 39, yeah, and then backed off to support around 16, and today significantly bounced. And the bounce, although it took it up to 1783, it pulled back to 1704, was still up 66 cents or 4%. Um, and the volume increased a bit, the best in about six sessions. So I'm hopeful that that 16 range is support, and we can move up and take out that 1840 range and start to run into the uh, mid 20s with 5.86 days to cover. That could happen, and I'm looking at the long-term pattern. This is basically a one, two, three, four, fifth, the fifth wave. It could be just one and two of five, and then we're gonna go three, four, and five. So maybe, maybe we get that, maybe we don't, but I have a target in the, the next few weeks, potentially the mid-20s. AVXS had a significant breakout, it seems to me. The volume was almost 500,000. It was up 5.6% um, or 325. It closed a couple points off the high, but had nice range, and you can see it closed right on the uh, resistance level. So for me, if any kind of follow through here, we may see 70, 71 in the stock. That's my target going forward. And there's 17.2 days to cover. Could get some hell of a, one hell of a squeeze here. I'm also looking at this as potentially a large one, two, three, four, and this could be wave five starting as well. EDIT with another big day up nearly two points. At one point it was up uh, to 25.55, but close 24.93 up 193. That was 8.4%. And a solid 865 million shares, 865,000 shares, excuse me, is a uh, you know increase over the last four sessions. <clears throat> and today, more importantly, very similar to AQMS, it popped out of a falling wedge and, and closed rather significantly higher. I'm looking at that as a potential target near the 28 level. And should we get to that, we can even see the stock get up near 32. There's 5.3 days to cover on that one. Foundation Medicine FMI is a swing trade, which we put on when it broke out knowing fully well it might pull back, and it did get a three-wave correct to pull back into the 20-day 20, 20 moving average. This uh, is a wedge, or actually looks like more of a falling wedge if you draw it this way. And so today was a nice pop-out, very similar to what we had, again, in Edit and AQMS, right? and more, more similar to Edit. There's a falling wedge there, and there's a wedge there. So um, let's see, and with 360,000 shares, significant enough for that stock, and with 12, almost 13 days to cover. This stock could very well make a run at the uh, 27 and a half level or, and or 29 short term. 13 days to cover. Hmm. Well, GOGL, uh, although again, I keep telling you I'm not a fond of the shipping group. Here, here's, this, here's one that came down from 30 to two and a half, based out for almost a year, and has been breaking out and running in a nice parallel rising channel. If I actually drew this right, it would look more like this. Something like that. You can see that the angle of ascent is a rather steep one. And today's action shows that the stock popped and it gapped and ran up 8% or 51 cents, 400, almost 500,000 shares. It's a solid line for that stock. I'm looking for a move potentially to eight and a half, nine short term. Could be interesting. Earnings coming out. Oh, they came out today. That's one reason why it popped. IMGN, what an interesting low price stock. Here's a stock that dropped from the high teens to literally one and a half. Double bottom, exploded off that low, and then formed a coil. It broke out yesterday while I was off the uh, off the desk in New York, and then it popped and followed through all the way up to 380 today, 378 before backing off. But I like the look of it. Uh, there's 11.4 days to cover on this, and now that the declining top line has been taken out, it just appears to me we may make a run at the gap here. 435, my near-term target, so look for another point or so, and then we'll see if we can get through that. Big day for Kite. Up 14 points nearly on almost 10 million shares, 24.5%. Explosive move, solid run after the morning pullback low here in that coil we give you a swing trade. It quickly ran five points, almost six points. Well, let's see. 66 and change to 72 and change. Yeah, uh, it ran about uh, $6 from where we gave it to you as a swing in just a couple hours. So with the pullback late in the day, it's not a bad consolidation at all. And it closed very well up near the upper end of the range on a whopping 9.7 million. That's never traded that. But what it did is break out of this entire base over the last year on a breakaway gap. Usually when we see these, we can work our way higher. I'd be, I'm expecting 70, 
six to 79 zone, and then maybe we make a run at 90. We shall see. This one was 14 days to cover in addition. And next week, earnings are coming out as well. Kindred Healthcare had a significant pop today. It went up $1.15 to 9 near the upper end of the range of the day. Um, only a nickel up high, actually. 14.6% gain, 3.5 million. And with 5.2 days to cover, this broke the declining tops line, moved up through the lateral resistance. And I, I'm thinking now we may take a run first at around 9 three quarters. That could happen as easily tomorrow. But then we may get a run towards the 10.5 three quarters range short term. That's my target. Life. $4 stock up 55 cents or 16% on 4 million. But more importantly, this is a stock that traded near 30 at uh, 20, near 29. So came down in a long term downtrend, about a two year drop. Um, and then reversed off of right over here. That was the breakaway move and then a pullback consolidation. It broke out again. And today was a significant price volume surge as it exploded, as I said, for 16%. Uh, now, um, it, the base has been taken out. Lateral price resistance is there. Should we take this out as early as tomorrow and keep an eye on 450? I would look for a run up towards six, six and a quarter. That could be the next target on this one. 2.7 days to cover. LXC is looking good. Um, after the pop a week ago, I pulled back and held a 50 for three days. Today exploded from 861 to 1128. Uh, That's a huge move. Close at 1087 up 203 or 23% on two and a half million with 14 point. Three days to cover. This one could get a fall through towards 12 and a half. NTRI with an explosive move up 730 to 18.6% uh, on 2 million uh, on earnings. A solid report. And you can see that the rising channel was broken. The long term channel, looking at it this way, you can see this is a one, two, three, four, and a big fifth wave. So we may be at a point where the stock has to do some more consolidating or pulling back. But if momentum carries it through 50, we could very well see substantial improvement on that. And there are 4.5 days to cover, as I said. Um, up next is Weight Watchers, which not only had a good day intraday, as you can see the pop here out of the coil, jumping uh, 228 to 1439, as high as 1483. After hours, it traded all the way up to 17 and a half before backing way off. And then it recovered, beautiful recovery from 1345 to 15, almost 16. Huge recovery. And it closed at the upper end of the range after hours. So up an additional dollar thirty-five or thereabout. And uh, we'll be watching this one tomorrow because if there's an additional follow-through to that, this is potentially taking out a triple top here, which could lead to a stock that runs through the 20 and then 25 area. We'll have to see. There's almost 15 days to cover. Lastly, on the long side is Wuba. Wuba popped sharply, went up uh, 411 or 12.65% on nearly 5 million and with 7.66 days to cover as well. It looks to me like the long-term declining top line might get tested, but that means this stock needs to make a run first to fill the gap at 40 and then to get up towards the 44 rate. Those are my targets going forward. Probably a decent swing trade based on today's action. We'll see what happens. Now, moving over to the short side, a review of some of the boxes shorts that I've selected for today. AZO. Well, AZO um, had a big reversal day as it ran up to the gap. That's the fourth time it ran in the gap zone and couldn't get through it and reversed. Reversal, reversal, reversal. Another nasty one today. It got up to almost 7.53 and closed at 7.36. Like 17 points off the high down 4.30. I'd call that a pretty bad reversal. Now, if this is wave one and this is two, look out below. If you get to 7.15, we're looking at a $6, $680 stock and maybe even worse. Looks like a massive top. We shall see. BJ Restaurants with a tough day, down 95 cents, 2.5%. Not a big, big bad day, but you can see that for me, this is in a long declining top slope range after the head and shoulder here. Uh, it broke down. And this is me. One, two, three, four, five, wave one, wave two. This is wave three and four. Wave five should or could take us down towards the 28 range. Quadronic CATM. Someone asked me today, is it still a short? I say, why wouldn't it be? Take a look at this. So it gets crushed and for three days it's sitting, oh sorry, it gets crushed and for a week and a half it's been sitting there flagging. Today it dropped 91 cents, it dropped a couple percent. But should it drop out of here, we should get a, get a, we should get a quick move to about 41 and a half, followed by 36 and a half, maybe 37. But those are my targets going forward. And this broke and broke hard and it has been having a tough time bouncing. Retailers look terrible. In addition to AutoZone, I have Dollar General, which today got run over, uh, nearly the 5% loss. If it gets through 70, look out below. Dollar Tree's another, rising kind of bear flag. 
couldn't get through resistance right there at about 82, uh, two, two and a half. And it rolled over today, dropping 288, 3.6%. This one looks like it's headed for another test. One, two, three, four, five times. Couldn't get through, through 73. If we do, look out below, down towards 60. Another one is G3 Apparel. It says manufacturing, but I think they have tuxedo stores as well. I may be wrong. They make tuxedos. Here's the bottom line. It's in a nasty chart. Roll over wedge, wedge, flag, flag, another um, consolidation wedge in there. And uh, looking at the weekly chart, it looks pretty bad, doesn't it? Very bad technicals. Should we get through here, I would be expecting to see 19, and maybe even 15 thereabout, or 16. HURN, a new one I added last week when I saw the breakdown and snapback, but here's the bottom line. It's, it doesn't look very good. Here's your daily, and here's your weekly. And the weekly looks pretty massive, toppy. The long-term rising bottoms line appears to be right there. If you're looking at the long-term channel up there, it's already been broken. You know, actually, when you look at this angle, it's actually closer to there, isn't it? So there's your parallel rising channel. It broke hard here, and a rising wedge up, and it actually got a little bit through, probably head faking some people and stopping some people out, only to roll over again, and now it's testing key, key, critical resistance across here. The support, excuse me. Next target, where is it? Well, let's take a look, 28 and a half. Wow, that's pretty far down there, isn't it? Let's take a look at 33 and then 28 and a half. iRobot, um, looking like it wants to die, meaning that once its stock is in a wrong run, running phase like that, and it gets cracked with a breakaway gap to the downside, the moving, moving averages roll over and cross over, and you get a rise up on lower volume with bad technicals, it looks like a bear wedger flag. Yeah, today it was down 132 or 2.2%, but I'm looking for the breakdown. I'm looking for it to get take out 56 and fall into the 51.2 zone before getting down further towards 46.7. PVH, well, look, it, it ain't, it, it hasn't uh, performed in the last three weeks because it's been doing that, but you got to sometimes be patient. When a stock drops sharply, bounces and drops again, then you usually get another bounce. Even if this is a one, two, three, four, the fifth wave could or should take you below support into the low to mid 70s. Red Robin Gourmet Burger, uh, um, I wouldn't call it gourmet, but anyway, uh, 170 loss today, 3.6%. You can see it's right on support. Should it break here, we should see about 41, 40 and a half. And then I'm looking at the possibilities of getting it down towards a high, uh, to mid to high 30, maybe 37. Signet Jewelers, big hit today, big hit. Down 929 or 12 and three quarter percent. Everything's low is 63 and a quarter. It didn't close much off that, lo off that low and There are very key, it actually glows below this double bottom here. That's nasty. Let's take a look at a weekly or a three day. Okay, there's a better picture. You can see where the support here is, but it's broken. And I would very, very, I'd be very surprised if it did make a run right at that level, maybe even in that zone. That, that would be somewhere around 58, 59, and then we'll. Look, the bottom line is it's come down quite a bit, so you want to write cover near the bottom of the channel, so somewhere in that zone, it's near a cover point. UAA, well, the bear wedge I showed you after the big gap down broke today, and it dropped another 4%. Nasty looking chart. Look at this massive top rollover wedge, breakdown wedge. Um, I can see it easily going to 18.5 and, and maybe even at mid-teens. UPS has rolled over hard and then formed the bear wedge. Not like in this, the technicals have deteriorated rapidly. If it can take this out, we should see a test of 100, maybe even 94.5. And lastly, today's WEX, Wright Express, which I added this weekend. And looking at the daily chart, it looks like a long uptrend. It took it from 54 up to 120 some odd. Big reversal day two weeks ago, and now a bear flag. Today it started to move back down again, it lost 353 or 3%. It wouldn't shock me if it takes this out, if it gets hurt hard over under 109 I'm projecting 99 100 and maybe a lot more but let's just take a look at the lateral support that comes in potentially along there and that is about 98 should that drop well if that's taken out and we're, if we have a potential to go on down 80 or less so keep your eye on this stock as if it does roll it could roll hard and folks that is it for tonight